Welcome to There is a Method to the Madness. My name is Rob Maxwell and I'm an exercise physiologist. I'm the owner of Maxwell's Fitness Programs and I've been in business since 1994. Today's topic is poor coaching and man, I'm sick of it and comparative appraisal. All right, I'm gonna start out by thanking one of our sponsors today. Jonathan and Lynn Gilman at the Gilman Group at Realty Pros. They currently have over 275 star reviews on Zillow and over 100 million sales between the two of them. They're absolutely the best. It's not too late to sell your home. The market isn't dead yet. If you're thinking about selling or buying, please give them a shout. 386-451-2412 or thegildengroup.com. All right, so... I was working out at a pool this morning, and I don't really want to say where because it's really not the point. And, uh, you know, I just saw some really bad coaching with the kids. And what, what I heard was a term we talk about in sports psychology called comparative appraisal. And comparative appraisal basically means that you are trying to teach a kid how to be better by comparing them to one of their peers. That's called comparative appraisal. Now, when we study sports psychology and we look at dropout rates of young athletes, the number one reason why kids drop out of youth sports is comparative appraisal. Number one, number one. So, in this instance, it was, hey everybody, so-and-so is popping out of the water better than anybody. Stop what you're doing, and if you wanna see how you're supposed to rise up out of the water, watch so-and-so. And this is why so-and-so is probably the most likely to win at this specific event. I was walking off when I heard that, and I'm thinking, Oh man, like that's the worst thing you can do. Now for so-and-so, that may be great. It may be a great day, you know, in front of your 20 peers or however many there were, you know, you're you're probably thinking, man, I'm top dog and, you know, this is great. I feel good about myself. But what about the other 19? You know, they feel like, oh man, I'm not good enough. I'm never going to be good enough. The coach always puts this person out there and talks about them and, you know, why do we even try? And, you know, I'm not trying to pick on, you know, again, a location or whatever, even if you are trying to figure out where this is. It absolutely doesn't matter because they rotate coaches all the time. My point is, and, and I really don't think the coach, in my opinion, was being malicious at all. Like, I really think just my estimation, don't know the person at all, was probably thinking, you know, I've been trying to teach this and they're not getting it. This is a way to show them. You know, he probably does not know at all. That's what I think. I don't think it's malicious. I just think it's um, what we run into in this industry of all industries between fitness and sports is there's really lack of an accreditation of coaching. So, you know, the, the problem is not so much him, maybe he's a volunteer, no idea, but the problem is really we need to be taking our training and coaching certifications and licenses or what have you and taking them a lot more serious and doing something about it. And I see it all the time. I don't see it as much with youth sports because I'm not around it as much, but when I was and I was observing some of the coaching that went on with my daughter, high school, horrible coaches did the same thing with basketball and volleyball. We're selecting some of the kids that they already knew better, that already did travel ball with them, so they already had a relationship with them. And then those kids became the favorites and they always got selected to be the person who showed how to do a spike in volleyball or showed how to do a free throw in basketball or whatever it might be. And the other kids already started out basically thinking, well, 
I'm already behind the eight ball. I don't know this coach because I never played travel ball or whatever. And she ended up only playing her freshman year basketball, freshman year volleyball. And that's too bad because she's very naturally athletic. And I'm not just saying that because I'm her dad, but she's naturally athletic and she just didn't enjoy it. And I'm not one of those types of parents that says you got to stick this out or whatever, because it's like, no, I get it. I, I observed from the bleachers because I didn't miss a game, you know, like to go watch and I observed what was going on and I thought, eh, I don't blame her at all. And uh, just really bad, bad coaching at the high school level. And, um, you know, the, the idea behind youth sports is to encourage a lifetime of sport exercise and team building and all that kind of stuff. And we just don't see it. Now, I haven't been around it in a while since she's now in college. And, uh, you know, but today was the first day I've seen some of that with youth sports. And, you know, I don't like it. Um, I actually... I don't need to talk about my credentials and fitness and all that. I think everybody knows I have pretty high credentials. But, you know, when I was doing some youth coaching at the different sport level, I actually went up to a seminar at Notre Dame in Indiana. And it was called Play Like a Champion, which is their famous motto that they use. You know, that's, of course, means something besides play like a champion of your sport it means you know play like a champion there's characteristics of an individual who's a champion and they put on a three-day workshop that i was uh, privileged to go to and learn from and you know it was really good um it's it i mean it was great we got to listen to some of the coaches of the uh basketball team women's basketball hockey and then i believe i don't think it was their athletic director but it was somebody who formerly had played basketball and he was kind of like the lead speaker and you know he really went over the steps of youth coaching which I didn't even know you know there was things in there that I knew you know from a technical standpoint but I didn't know from a developmental standpoint and you know it was really really cool um, but basically what I learned was there's different stages to all this and that if you're basically below middle school level it's all about developing learning how to do things having fun sticking to the sport then when you get into middle school ages it's it's still mostly about developing so in other words learn to play all the different positions of your sport so if you're a swimmer learn to do all the strokes which they actually do do that with the kids if you're playing basketball, learn how to play guard, learn how to play center, learn how to play forward. If you're learning how to play volleyball, learn how to play back, learn how to play up, even if it costs your team wins, because at this age, it's not supposed to be wins and losses. Okay, these kids are under 12. These are kids. It's about learning how to play the sport. If you're playing baseball, let kids play outfield, let kids play infield. Let kids pitch, let kids catch. Let them play all these different positions. I hear sometimes little kids saying, well, you know, I'm told this, so they're really gonna keep me at this position because they think I have a shot to move up to, you know, go to different higher levels at this position. And I'm thinking, you're nine. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? And they've already proven in the statistics that these one sport athlete mentality kids that we have now are creating far more injuries at the higher levels than we've ever seen. I mean, I'm 56. When I was a kid, we did not have the injury rates in football, baseball, and basketball that we have now. Yet we have way better sports medicine now. And a lot of it is because kids have been playing one single sport since they were basically could could be as young as six and seven years old. Oh, you're a baseball player. Don't play football. Don't play basketball. Whereas when the generation of athletes I grew up watching, you know, the Dan Marinos, the John Elways, the people like that, they were multi-sport athletes. I mean... Dan Marino was a first-round draft pick of the Miami Dolphins and a first-round draft pick of the Kansas City Royals. Think of that. 
John Elway was a first-round draft pick of the Denver Broncos and a first-round draft pick of the New York Yankees. They both played in college, both sports. Think of that. That's amazing. And that these are two of the greatest to ever play their positions quarterback of all time. And yet, here they were playing two sports. So, you know, if, if they can pull it off and make it to the highest level, I think, uh, you know, the rest of the kids can too. So we used to see far more of that. We used to see kids, you know, taking volleyball season. Okay, volleyball season's over. Now let's go try cross country. Now let's go try track. Let's try dance. Let's try whatever. And if you're a boy, okay, we're playing basketball. That was cool. That was fun. Let me go play football. Let me play baseball. Let me play soccer. Oh, I'm going to play tennis for a season. What it does is it develops all these different muscles and it takes the stress off of trying to compete at one thing all the time so by the time the kid gets to college if they make it that far because less than one percent of the kids actually get college scholarships for athletics less than one percent that's pretty damn low right so if they do happen to make it that far they're already burned out they're already stressed out i know so many high school athletes and collegiate athletes that basically don't want to do their sport once their college career is over. That's sad. They've been pushed to the grind since they were kids, and that's just not the way. All right, hardly anybody makes a living in professional sports. Hardly anybody. Less than 1% of the 1% I spoke of in college make it to the professional level, yet we're driving them to be these, you know, excellent next Michael Jordans or Dan Marinos or Tom Brady's or Michael Phelps or whoever you want to throw in there, you know, and what we're doing is we're really sabotaging their love of a lifetime sport, of wanting to gravitate and do something that's good for them, that they enjoy, that they love to do. So, you know, I know these are two different issues. It's, you know, parental and coaches pushing kids, and then there's poor coaching that I spoke of earlier, but it still is all centered around youth sports. And what I believe we need is we need, we need a lot more accreditation with this. I think, you know, I know that nothing is free. There's no such thing as a free lunch, but we do have to find a way to make sure that coaches go through a legitimate coaching accreditation program before they start coaching kids. And I know I know it's a problem. I know. I get it. A lot of the coaches in high school are history teachers or whatever, and I just randomly threw out history. But, like, it is not their profession of choice, and they're doing it to help out. That's a problem. You know, and it's just like the other directions we've gone with the school system, which, you know, I do have an opinion on, and whatever, but I do not believe in the, the old, you know, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math only. I mean, okay, so have you looked around and seen America these days? I mean, we're 70% overweight or obese. Sure, they might get engineering jobs, might, but then there's a lot of people who get great jobs who don't have any of those technical skills and are very happy, and more importantly, healthy, enjoying life. So we've really kind of missed the mark on what's important here, right? So we want to spend money on all these, you know, STEM teachers and STEM programs, but we don't want to put any money into trying to hire accredited coaches or accredited coaching programs. Money you can take and put into resources of making sure that every parent or teacher that wants to coach goes through an accredited coaching program and then is also watched to make sure that they're doing all the things properly because we also hear way too many horror stories of that going wrong too. The point is is we need to really think about that, make that far more of a priority because I sit back and I love sports. You know, I loved sports before I loved fitness. I mean, when I was a little kid I remember living up in New York and at first I was a Mets fan and I can remember just thinking the colors were cool and wanting to hear if they won and you know I was a real little kid and I up there it was in the you know it was 1970 so I heard all about the miracle 1969 Mets and all this which was pretty cool you know they had won a World Series only after five years being a Major League Baseball so it became all the rage 
and rightly so. But anyway, I remember that. I remember loving sports. I remember having wiffle ball, wiffle ball bats. I remember having little footballs to go out in my yard and play and, you know, throwing a football with my dad and throwing a baseball with my sister and sisters. And I loved sports, you know, and then I loved fitness and I still love sports. I love both. And I think it is such a great way to keep people fit and healthy mentally, physically, and spiritually. Like as adults now, you know, we, we can't really play tackle football and compete. Not wisely, can't have basketball leagues, although there are some or whatever. But there's triathlon, there's running events, there's all these sports that adults can get competitive in, which really helps them blow off stress. It's fun, it's a hobby, it's fit, and it's healthy. And then I hear about like kids who don't want to do it because some dumb, ignorant coach ruined some kids' love for a sport by comparing them to other kids or comparing them to athletes they'll never be, can't be, comparing them to pros that are just at a whole nother level. You know, it, it's just not right. And we really have a coaching and a training, and I'll cover that more later this week, but we have a training problem too. We have a problem with this with trainers too that have no clue what they're doing. They don't have any degrees. Their certifications are not accredited in most cases because there's only four accredited certifications. American College of Sports Medicine, National Strength Conditioning Association, ACE, American Council on Exercise, NASM, National Academy of Sports Medicine, that's it. And the ones I know that have those, I taught and I know, and it's few and far in between, and the rest have absolutely nothing Yet they're out there doing their Instagram posts, they're doing their Facebook posts, their Facebook lives, they're working at gyms, they're telling people what to do, and I'm constantly having to go back and, you know, say, eh, that's not true, you do damage control. So, what's the point today? The point is that we have an accreditation problem. We need to think about it. You're a listener of this podcast, I ask you, you know, if you've got kids, you know, ask the the coaches, you know, well, besides being good at the sport at one time in your life, have you taken a coaching course? You know, what is your expertise on this other than knowing how to play the sport? Do you know how to talk to kids? Do you know how to motivate kids? Do you know the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation? You know, do you know what a locus of causality is? I mean, all these things that they should know if they're really going to try to mold young people. If you're a teacher, do something about it in your school. Bring something up. And if you're, you know, none of those things, but you go to gyms and all that, and you see Facebook posts, you see Instagram posts, ask people. Ask them what their credentials are once they start railing on. If they don't answer you, you just got the answer, right? So, you know, that's the message of the day. And uh, help me out here, all right? Because it's a problem. It's something I'm very passionate about. Now, I want to thank our new sponsor. Other than the Gildan Group, we have a new sponsor all right if you have a taste for turkish mediterranean food i ask you to travel on over to ormond beach where you can enjoy food made fresh every day in a traditional turkish istanbul turkish manner all right this veteran owned authentic turkish restaurant offers very healthy balanced foods and i can tell you this they have phenomenal salads and vegan options give them a shout if you would. All right. So until next time, be max fit and be max fit.